episode of Full Metal American, we're going to be doing something a little different. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, my custom half-stock plains rifle. Um, most people nowadays call it a Hawken rifle. I'm also going to go over the differences between that too. Why, uh, you know, so many people associate this with the Hawken brothers and what the truth and reality behind that was. In order to do that, I'm going to be going over a book a little bit. Well, kind of a book review, but also where I got a lot of my source material from. And that book is The Hawken Rifle, It's Place in History, by Charles E. Hansen, Jr. And it's an excellent book, and I highly recommend it to you if you're interested in any part of the fur trade, or the Oregon Trail, or even the gold rush, the California gold rush in 1849. Um, it offers a lot of interesting information and perspectives on the Hawken Rifle, its use, and, well, just how available it was to the general public at that time. Alright, so for the first part of this video, I'm going to go over the firearm itself. Um, this rifle, and it is a rifle, 50 caliber, was made by a man named John Morgan, or a gunsmith by, John, by the name of uh, John Morgan. And I tried to find more information on him. I actually purchased this from the Gunworks Muzzle Loading Emporium. Um, an excellent, excellent place to buy muzzle loading firearms and anything black powder. I'm going to put a link down in the description below, so if you guys want to check out their site, you can. Um, it has a cherry corner percussion lock on it. As you can see, it's got a nice maple stock. Um, and the barrel is a green barrel. It's extremely well made and extremely accurate. Um, right out of the box, it was sighted. You know, it was shot excellent. I was really impressed with it. Now, obviously, it was used when I got it. It's very hard for me to afford a rifle of this quality, brand new. But the barrel and the bore are excellent on it. Uh, it's terrific. So... I had a really good time the first time I shot it, and I'll show some footage here in a little bit of that. You guys can check that out. But, as you notice, it is a half stock. So the stock only goes halfway up. And these rifles, well, in popular culture, are usually associated with the fur trade. But as we're going to find, that's not necessarily true. They were certainly used during the fur trade, and there were certainly British manufacturers that made a lot of round-barreled half stock rifles for the fur trade and rifles like this which is I would call this a plains rifle it's not really a Hawken because Hawken is a brand a lot of people think it's kind of a style of rifle it's actually a brand of rifle so we'll get a little bit more into that I'll show you guys some footage of me shooting this real quick and then we'll go over some history about this rifle and these types of rifles got some fouling in there now so the ball's getting tighter and it's getting more accurate. See, I'd probably need a thicker patch for this rifle to really get like pristine accuracy out of it. His first shot out, shot out of this gun was the row, lower yeah. left. The second was the rightmost one. The third one was dead center and the fourth one was a little bit under dead center. So yeah, these are, are the, the first shots barrel, that he's taken out of this whole gun, out of this gun ever.
too bad, I don't think. Pretty nice. <laughs> All right, so for this next part of the video, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between a plains rifle and a Hawken rifle. Now, like I said before, Hawken rifle is a brand produced by the Hawken brothers in the early 19th century, early to late 19th century. Technically, they did pass over into the late 1850s. Um, and Sam and Jake Hawken were the, were the two Hawken brothers. Now, originally, they had gotten their experience working uh, at the arsenal in the armory at Harpers Ferry, Virginia. Um, and a lot of people think their work may be on the 1803 Harpers Ferry rifle. It was really the first half-stock service rifle, and a lot of people think the most beautiful arm ever issued to U.S. troops. I would probably agree with that. Um, might be where they got their idea for, you know, their half-stock rifles and why that became their, their popular form and what they're most known for. What a lot of people don't know is that the early Hawken rifles, a lot of them, were not only were they flintlocked, but they were full-stock rifles. So they weren't half-stock like this. This really doesn't start to appear until the 1830s, well into the fur trade, uh, you know, the, the whole, what we call the mountain man period, which really it's the beaver fur trade period, um, because you could technically call anyone living up in the mountains who's a frontiersman a mountain man. It, it wasn't really how they referred to themselves during that time period. But when you look at the history of these rifles, these were not only made by the Hawking brothers, but half stocks also were made by different British manufacturers, and there were several other companies like Henry and Lehman that also made trade rifles of that period. Something I found interesting uh, in the book that I was reading, that you know, the, the it's the Hawking rifle and its place in history, was that they weren't all that common. You know, you could think of your average trade rifle or you know a standardized long rifle, flintlock pretty much the preferred and most common arm of the mountain men or the frontiersmen during the fur trade era. But a gun like this, this is like, you know, this would be like if you want to put it in a car terminology, you know, you've got your your Ford Explorer out there that's getting the job done, and then, you know, you've got your, your, your Cadillac or your, you know, your Escalade. And that's kind of what the Hawking rifle was during the fur trade, particularly in the late fur trade, is it was the, it was a really awesome firearm and a great rifle but most of the mountain men didn't carry them. Most of the fur trappers didn't carry them because one, they were significantly more expensive than all of the other arms available. And two, the Hawking brothers, you know, being a smaller shop, simply didn't manufacture enough for them to arm everyone. You know, even at their peak years of production, they were maybe putting out 150 to 200 arms at most. And that was actually in the late fur trade, probably in the 40s and the 50s. Uh, what a lot of people don't know about the Hawken shop and the Hawken brothers is that they actually did a lot more, you know, outfitting and repair work. They would repair all kinds of different weapons and firearms that people would bring in. They would even issue basic supplies, do basic blacksmithing and metalwork. Um, and that's re really where most of their income came from. They also manufactured a great deal of fowling pieces, so single barrel shotguns. They also produced a lot of double barrel shotguns and an assortment of other firearms to include pistols. Uh, their, their pistols had quite a reputation, as I understand it as well, from the reading I had done. So, you know, thanks to movies like Jeremiah Johnson and The Mountain Man, you know, and uh, a lot of those classic 70s and 80s Mountain Man movies that we all love. Now, don't get me wrong, Jeremiah Johnson is a great movie. Maybe one of the best movies of all time. Um, oh, my cat's making noise. But, uh... You know, it kind of filled the imagination, you know, and then you had companies like Thompson Center and, you know, CVA pumping out these these half-stock rifles that really don't resemble a Hawken rifle at all. I mean, they do in the sense that they're a, they're, they're a half-stock rifle in the right caliber, give or take. But what they really represent more so is a Lehman or a Henry trade rifle, which would have been, you know, come a little later and would have been primarily sold to Indians or Native Americans in trade. So... It's quite different, you know, than the than the average person thinks. But I would say the biggest thing was is that the Hawken Brothers rifles really didn't become famous, at least from the documentation that the author provides in the book I read. And it's a very well researched book. As someone who's been trained in research as a scientist, I can tell you that he did a pretty good job, um, you know, 
dot in his eyes, you know, keeping everything detailed and organized. And uh, he, you know, he gives a lot of information to include receipts and sales bills from the actual Hawkins shop itself, showing what they were selling each year and who was making the purchases. So it's a uh, it's a really great book, and I recommend you read it. But most of all, what it shows is that this rifle was actually probably more so the preferred weapon of miners, buffalo hunters, and people out on the plains. Like, you know, if you think of Oregon Trail, what kind of weapon would they have carried? Well, a, a half-stock plains rifle would have been a really common arm of that period. So think late 1840s through the 1850s, this half-stock style of, you know, long rifle, because it really is a long rifle, um, would have been the most common. Now, one thing that we are pretty certain about, at least the information and data shows this, is that the Hawken brothers were probably the first company to bring in percussion lock firearms into the fur trade, or into the mountain man era as we like to call it these days. So that is one unique fact. Um, I would highly recommend you guys pick up the book yourself. I didn't want to turn this into a massive history lesson, but a lot of people say, you know, maybe it was Winchester that won the Old West, or, you know, Sam Colt and his you know, his Colt Navy uh, revolvers, you know, often attributed to the West, you know, winning the West as well, more so being the equalizer between men. But uh, I would say that if this gun could embody anything, this was the gun that won the plains and ended the frontier, you know, and brought, you know, the westward expansion into full bloom. Uh, it's a wonderful rifle. If you can go out and afford one, I recommend you guys get your hands on one. I would love to have the skill to build a rifle like this. I'm just not there. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I just wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, it's been good for you guys. It's winter now, so it's a little hard for me to get out shooting. It gets pretty cold where I live at, but we still go out and shoot. But thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and like. So thank you guys and have a good day. And in case you guys are wondering, this is where all the noise was coming from. Say hello, Squatch. Well, this is my cat, so if you hear it in the video, this is who's making all the noise. Well, thank you guys again, and please like and subscribe, and have a good day.